All right, hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dalton Rutlinger, and we're going to be checking out some more Sailwind. And in fact, I think this is going to be the first episode of an official Let's Play, uh, depending on how everything turns out. Um, this is also my first time recording with OBS Studio. I usually use Daz 3D to record, but I'm going to try out uh, OBS Studio. I got it completely for free off Steam, so I figured, why the heck not? So, for those of you who are unaware about what Sailwind actually is, um, you know, to be fair, it's not leagues different from ETS2 or American Truck Simulator, because basically, you transport goods, uh, goods from one island to another in your little handy-dandy ship here. Um, but you actually have to uh, stack the, the cargo to to an area where it actually makes sense because the cargo does have weight to it and it will weigh down your ship which if you don't stack your cargo right could lead to it either capsizing or taking on water um a lot of this hasn't really happened to me quite yet i did capsize one time but the game kind of glitched out and just kind of flipped me back over um which leads me to one point i want to point out before I get too far into it and just kind of forget about it. This game is in very, very early alpha. This game costs $20 on Steam, so if you buy it, expect to see, like, bugs and uh, glitches and stuff like that. Uh, alpha is ultimately just the developer feeling that the game is stable enough to be released to the public, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And for $20, I think you get pretty much what you pay for. The, the world is pretty big, and uh, the, the game does have some realistic uh, realistic physics and stuff to it, so um, I'll kind of explain more as we go along. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start a new game. There are three different starting positions. I would recommend going for this one because it is easy, and the region you're going to start in is... Uh, it doesn't really have that many storms, and the, the sailing conditions are pretty easy. Um, there's also this one, which... Uh, it comes with a... <laughs> ironically enough, it comes with a bigger boat, but a smaller, store, uh, a, a smaller storage compartment. Uh, you can't really store as much cargo on this thing as you can this thing, which is just kind of <laughs> ironic, really. Uh, but this thing can ultimately go a lot faster. If you feel like you kind of know what you're doing and you want to just hop into the, if you just want to hop into a challenge right off the bat, go for this one. Um, I would not even think about touching this one to be honest until you at least know what the heck you're doing. So for the purposes of my particular let's play, which I'm gonna try and show off as much as I can, I'm gonna go for this one. And. Uh, We might do one or two different journeys, depending on how things go. If you want to read this, uh, feel free to pause the video. I am not going to read it. It's basically just saying that the uh, the game is an early alpha, expect bugs and stuff like that. So yeah, this is our ship. Um, you come with, you start off with a finite supply of food and water, which I like to keep my food and water supplies towards the back. That way it's just not close to the cargo. I, 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 I do kind of have some OCD issues, so... I might be uh, spending a couple minutes trying to get this just perfectly aligned. Urgh. You know what, that'll have to do. Alright, so this here is your water. You get 60 uses. This cup right here takes up three, so be aware of that. You have 12 goat cheese that you start off with, and you start off with a basic map of the area that you're in. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that there. You start off with a compass, and you start off with uh, a, a scroll that kind of tells you the very bare basics of sailing. I have already read through it, uh, but if you buy this game, I would recommend uh, reading through it yourself for your first particular playthrough. This cup is going to be 
problematic, isn't it? No, I was so close. All right. Um, there is a survival element to this game. Your green bar is the fatigue of your character. The blue bar is your thirst, and the orangish yellow bar is your hunger. Um, we started off. I forget the name of this of this particular island. Uh, there are other boats and stuff that like to sail around. The world isn't completely empty, but you're not going to see too many of these guys out on the open ocean, at least not yet. Um, and you start off with 100 gold to your name. So... I could buy some extra food, but I don't think... I will, mostly just because I can't really afford anything. <laughs> Alright, so... We started over here. This island right here, Neverdin. The, the, the names in this game are kind of weird. But for your first delivery, I would recommend going to the Gold Rock City. Just because it's very easy to spot and you're never really going to be that far away from it for your first initial voyages. Um, for right now, we have a reputation that will allow us to take two different jobs. So I'm going to take that one. And... I guess I'm going to take this one as well. All right. So as I mentioned before, there is a weight system to your cargo. So for right now, I'm just going to get everything on board the ship. You can use the mouse wheel to kind of rotate your cargo around to kind of put it in the optimal position. And obviously this is going to be kind of somewhat important unless you want to, you know, capsize. Go. And I think I'll go ahead and put these guys right up here on top of those guys. Okay, so. That big rock over there in the distance, that is our destination. And we have a favorable wind... Actually, yeah, 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 we do. Okay. Um, wind is obviously going to play a big part in this because... You don't have a motor on your ship, you have sails. And obviously, sails require wind power. So, what we need to do is we need to pull the ship off the docks. And I'm just going to give it a little push, if I can. There we go. Well, almost. Ugh. Keep pressing the wrong key. Alright, so... There is a roadmap available for this game if you want to check it out on the Steam page. I'll try and leave a link in the description if I remember. this little glitch here. Unfortunately, if you have stuff kind of stacked underneath the sail, the sail kind of... It doesn't unfold all the way.
Um, text at the top at the top of the screen. Would you like to uh, disappear, maybe? And if you press the C key, you can go into a exterior camera view. Okay, text at the top of the screen. Would you mind just napping off? I've had to sail at literally every single angle. I don't know what more you want from me. Maybe just try that. Maybe it'll go way over time. I don't know. But yeah, our destination is way the heck over there in the distance. And you might not think so, but... You can actually move around quite speedily in this game. Like, we're already that far away from the docks, and the this is just a small archipelago that we're in right now. There are, I believe, four or five, maybe, different uh, regions you can go to, and in between every single region, there is an absolutely massive ocean you have to, uh, you have to traverse. But you can't go straight out into the open ocean immediately. You, you need to buy some uh, navigation tools, which I'll show you once we get to the capital city. And I don't know how much of this I am going to leave in or edit out. Uh, since this is the first voyage, I'll probably leave... I will probably leave uh, pretty much the entire thing. Unless uh, it starts taking a little bit longer than I originally expected it would. Um... So, while we're just sitting here kind of doing nothing, I'll kind of explain a little bit about how the game system works. Basically, you have reputation for every single region. And um, depending on how big your reputation gets, you can actually start to get discounts for that particular region. And there are other ships and stuff you can buy, and as well as... Uh, furnishings for your own ships as well. You can buy maps and uh, uh, stoves so you can cook fish. You can buy fishing poles so you can catch fish while you're out on your journeys. Um, there's just no shortage of things you can actually buy. You can even buy little uh, lamp post hangers that you can just kind of put anywhere you want on your ship then hook your, uh, your lantern onto it as, uh, wherever you want. So the game is in a decent amount of detail, and I, I just realized the text at the top of the screen finally disappeared, which suits me just fine. Uh, I, this is a game I know is not going to be for everybody, but I thoroughly enjoy it. I don't know why, but this game has probably become one of my more favorite games here lately, uh, just because there for a long time I was actually really, really wanting a a shipping game that took place out on the water, and the only real game that I had for that was either The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, which I've played to absolute buggery, and I don't really have anything left to discover in that game. <laughs> Or Sea of Thieves, which just has an absolutely massive, toxic community. And uh, then I came across this game because I saw it from many a true nerd, and I was like, you know what? I want this on my wish list. This game was on my wish list for probably a good, I don't know, five, maybe four months. 
and I don't think it ever went on sale a single time, so I don't think, with the exception of maybe the holiday sales, this game is going to be going on sale too often. A sailing game going on sale, who would have thought? <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much going to be like the vast majority of what you do uh, in between trips. It's just going to be kind of looking around at your locations and stuff. Now, later on, once we get into different regions of the map and whatnot, we'll have to rely on the stars and the sun to kind of help us navigate. Because we'll have to know our latitude and longitude at pretty much all times. And the tools you have to use to buy that stuff are actually pretty freaking expensive. I think I'm going to turn the sail a bit more in a this way -ish sort of direction. Maybe a little bit further. Uh, as far as I've been able to tell, the, the easiest way to know if you're actually moving is just to watch the wake behind you. And also, yeah, this right here is where you sleep on this particular boat. <laughs> this this really sketchy hammock. I would not sleep here. I, I don't know why, like, our character doesn't just have a bed or something, like, right here or over here that he can just sleep on, but... I, I guess he or she just prefers to, uh... sleep over the water. It wouldn't be so much of a problem if we were, like, always in port, but, uh... Out on the open ocean, wherever you start to get, like, really, really big waves. Uh, no. I would not sleep there at all. You could not pay me enough. And the weather system is quite detailed. Uh, there are storms that come through every now and then, and I haven't really been in the absolute heart of a storm yet, but... Uh, just being on the outskirts of one, it gets pretty, pretty sketchy. You can see that boat over there just kind of doing its own thing. Now, the, um, every dock you go to, I believe there is a boat that is scripted to come into, into port once you start up a new game. But I don't know if those boats sail around to other islands or if they just stay around that one little island and come in. If the developer ever sees this, I, I doubt he ever does, but I would love to see, like, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, fancy, but it would be kind of nice to see just a few more ships just kind of sailing around from, like, one port to another. It could be, you know, a completely um, scripted event. But it would be kind of cool to see, like, a lot of ships just coming into into harbors, like this harbor up here, where it's a capital city. The harbor would be extremely busy. So it just kind of add that little touch more of realism. Like, maybe you have to wait on a few ships to unload their cargo and then head out before you can actually dock yourself. That was always one of my uh, biggest, I, I wouldn't say complaints, but I always wanted to see uh, more and more trucks like coming into uh, delivery points in American Truck Simulator and ETS2, just to kind of give a bit more realism into the game. You know, at the speed we're going, we might actually reach this city without having to rest, though. It's going to be pushing it. Also, there's a way you can lock the steering wheel. I don't really know how, though.
Now, I'm kind of curious to know if I could actually sell this. It probably wouldn't hurt to just kind of hold on to it, just in case, but... Just in case I need to refresh myself on something, but I think I've pretty much got it. And how's our wind doing? It's still blowing in the same direction. <laughs> the wind does just randomly shift on you, but... It happens so rarely that it just kind of catches you off guard whenever it does. Screenshot. Now, I don't know if these graphics are going to be final. I would assume they're not. Um, it might just be the style that the developer has just kind of gone with for the time being, but... Uh, since this is early alpha, expect everything to change. Um, at some point or another, the developer actually mentioned that he would like to put multiplayer in as a potential thing, but that's not for the very far distant future. But I, I think this game would be really cool in multiplayer. You can have your friends or maybe other players come along and uh, just kind of set sail in the open ocean together. One of you can be in charge of the steering wheel, the other one can be in charge of the sails and all that stuff. Because the other ships you can buy in the game, some of them are absolutely massive. Like, it, it would be kind of difficult just for one person to do everything. This ship, obviously one person can do pretty much everything pretty easily, but... Yeah, see right here, we're kind of getting into some choppy waters. These waves are nowhere near as big as some of the ones you'll come across out of the open ocean, though. Like, these waves are pretty tame. Not very big at all. kind of closing the distance. Yeah, that's the other. We started out like way the heck back there, so we've already gone that far. And how far was this? Yeah, that's 56 miles. So it's not... It's not a huge distance, but, I mean, in real life, like, it would take forever for a sailboat to get this far. One hundred seventy-two plus one hundred thirty-five. That is... Uh, I suck at doing math in my head. I just pulled up the calculator on my phone. How much was it? It was... 172 and 135, okay. So that's 307 gold that we're going to be making, which is going to put us at just over 400. Which isn't bad. But... There's one thing in particular that I'd like to have, but I'm not going to have enough money for. And that is a map of the entire world. I'll show it to you when we get to port, but... Uh, it costs like 700 gold or something like that. So it might not be as expensive as I'm expecting it to be, because my reputation is probably going to go up whenever we get to uh, the city over here. So yeah, this is the night sky. 
And the way you navigate is you want to look for the North Star. And the North Star is... It's a star that is completely stationary in the sky, but everything else just completely rotates around it. I think that's it, or maybe that. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just gonna watch the stars for a moment and just kinda Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's that one. I'm gonna do something kind of risky here. I'm just gonna kind of sleep. Your character does wake up if something happens, but you can't wake up yourself, and this is pretty much how sleeping works. Unless you anchor or raise the sails up, the ship will continue to sail without you interfering with it at all whatsoever. It'll, it'll do its best to stay on track by itself, but if you sail into a storm or something, or a wind shift, your character will wake up. There's one time I woke up, I thought my ship was literally about to capsize. And this is basically, <laughs> this is basically all sleeping really consists of, is just, uh... Alright, here we go, here we go. You, you basically just watch a loading bar. I will say one thing I think would be beneficial to have a... Am I moving? I feel like I'm not moving. I should be moving. One way to find out. Do I have a wake? I can't tell. Yeah, that's the city right over there. Uh, I didn't show this off before, but you can actually kind of jump up to the very top of this, the mast here. There's not really a crow's nest, but you get kind of the next best thing here, just by jumping up on top of these ropes. I think I'm going to change the sails just a little bit. I almost fell off right there, good grief. There we go. Now you do want to be careful when you go into these ports, because there are sandbars and stuff that'll kind of catch you off guard. Usually they have stakes to kind of mark them out, but not always the case. And you'll be surprised by how detailed the city actually is. Like, I wasn't really... I don't know how much I was expecting from this game, but whenever I got to this city, it pretty much surpassed all expectations. <laughs> And uh, each and every archipelago you'll find has its own little theme. The archipelago we're in right now has a bit more of a Middle Eastern theme. And the Emerald Isles have, or the Emerald Archipelago, has a more chi uh, Asian sort of vibe to it. And the other location, I don't really know. I haven't spent a lot of time there. 
um, I'm going to assume either an African or a European kind of theme. So the wind is pretty much completely to our side now. Which isn't great. But nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, I believe that dimmer star right there is the north star because I believe that one has kind of stayed in its own position and there are different constellations in the game too you can kind of use those to navigate by as well alright we're kind of closing in on the docks and I am not as far in as I thought I was there's a uh, sand bank coming up that I'd really rather try and avoid. You can kind of see it with those stakes. You might not be able to see it in the video, but there's these stakes in the water that are rising out right there. And those usually indicate that uh, the, the sand is... Uh, your ship's going to bottom out if you sail there, basically. Luckily, this thing ha is pretty light and it has a pretty shallow underbelly, but you still want to be careful. And that's one of the big ships you can buy over there. I'll have to show you this thing whenever we get docked. It is an absolute monster. And I think I'm also going to go ahead and start rise, uh, raising the sails up a little bit. Uh, for anybody curious, I do kind of have a stutter, or I at least kind of jumble up my words pretty often. It's just something I've done pretty much my entire life, and uh, I don't think it's ever going to go away, but sorry if it annoys you, but it's just, it's one of the things that makes me, me, you know. Now, as far as boat damage goes, I don't think your ship actually takes physical damage. I don't know... if your ship can actually like have hole, uh, holes punched into it or not, but you'll come across some sounds that don't sound too promising whenever you're docking or you run into something. Alright, let's go ahead and raise those up completely, and luckily your character is a pretty nifty little acrobat in this game. and put these on and we'll just get completely docked here as far as I can tell these things actually don't have a limit to how far they can go and let's go ahead and start unloading it okay I just failed to make that jump these things are way ahead of schedule I know, I know, I'm getting thirsty. And for whatever reason, whenever you start to get thirsty or hungry, your, uh, your, stream, your, your screen starts to go all black and fuzzy. I'll have to buy some water whenever I go to the market district. I don't want to use the finite supply of water that I have on my ship unless I absolutely have to. All right. Let's see if we can sleep until sun up.
It looks like the sun is trying to come up now. Shops probably aren't open just yet, but we'll start making our way to the market district. It's going to be funny, because they all just kind of pop into existence all at once. <laughs> but in the meantime, I guess I'll show you how detailed the city actually is. Like, I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll show you this massive ship I want to buy. This thing is expensive as all hell, but look at the size of the sails on this thing. Yeah, so you get all of this deck space. You get all this back here. Oh man, I can just imagine sailing the open oceans with this thing. But then you also get like your own little cabin back here, and, and as well as this whole under storage space. It's insane, but it costs... 12,500 gold. So it's going to be a while before we can actually afford that. And hopefully the market district is open by now. Yeah, they all just kind of pop into existence right there. All right. Whenever possible, you want to just buy your food and your water like this, because it doesn't take up nearly as much gold as just buying these crates do. They're quite a bit more expensive, but... Or, uh... The lamb, I mean, is quite a bit more expensive than anything else, but it's also going to be your most filling thing. So yeah, you can buy a big box of grain for 1350 or you can just buy, you know, several loaves of bread for like 14 gold at a time. 14 gold for a loaf of bread is pretty high in my opinion, but hey, you do you. Uh, you can buy firewood for your stoves, and these are your stoves right here. You can buy tables. Um, this over here. This is the uh, overall map. Like, we are down in Gold Rock City towards the very southwest. Up north of us is Oasis. Uh, to the... East of us is Emerald Ar Archipelago, which is where you start off in the medium difficulty. And then way up to the north is Astron, which is where you start with the hard difficulty. And then there's also Happy Bay. So the map is pretty detailed. But over here is also all of your uh, navigation tools and stuff. This right here is the main thing that I want to buy for right now. Because this, you basically point this at the North Star and it'll give you your quad uh, quadrants. It'll give you your uh, longitude, I believe. In fact, actually, you know what? I should probably buy, God, that's 120? Good grief. Okay, so I'm back down to 139 gold now, which is just great. Brooms? I don't know what brooms are really for, to be honest. Rum? Captain Jack Sparrow would be so proud. And then this is where you can buy more goat cheese, which is probably going to be your go-to uh, food for quite some time, just because like it's more affordable, more affordable than just about anything else. So I didn't get a reputation increase, unfortunately, and in fact, I didn't get anywhere near it. So, I might have to take care of that. 
So let's go take a little look-see at our flag and see which direction the wind is still blowing. It's still blowing in that direction, so... There's nothing really in that direction. There is another island kind of out towards that way, which we could probably go to, but... It would take a while. The Alchemist Island, that's pretty much just straight south. I don't think we're going to be going there. Usually because the Alchemist Island doesn't have really anything good in return. That island I got lost trying to go to. I haven't been there yet, but that's in that's the complete opposite direction the wind is blowing. Uh, that's where we just were. Could try going that way, I guess. Hmm. Well, you know what? I am actually going to just wait for the wind to die down, and then we'll, uh, make a decision, but... The next voyage will probably take place in the next video, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, let me know what you think about this game so far, because I would love to do like an actual Let's Play of this, and give this developer like all the support he really needs. Um, I don't know what his in... Okay, I don't know what his uh, end game goal ultimately is for this game. Okay, these are solid. Why aren't these solid? Okay. <laughs> I wonder if anybody else has discovered this. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to give this uh, developer all the support he really needs because... This game, I, I feel, could actually turn into something quite special. But he's going to need all, all the support he can get. Which I will do my part in supporting him with... Are barrels just not physical items? Yeah, barrels are just are just straight up not physical things. Okay, that's, that's bizarre. I'm going to assume the developer is aware of this, but you never know. Also, ooh, ooh. Secrets? Secrets? Ah, I can't even jump up here. There's an invisible wall. Ah, darn. Alright, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.